Hey, have you ever had questions about what you need to change in your slicer after you convert to Clipper? Let's go ahead and take a look. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I've had a question from a viewer about what to do with their printer. They've recently converted it over to Clipper, and they wanted to know what they needed to change in their slicer. One of the first things you need to change, besides optimizing your settings, is you really need to go over into your printer settings. And in your printer settings, you need to make sure you have the appropriate start and end code set. And basically what your start and end code is, it's a set of instructions that's inserted into the G code. And then when the printer prints the, fi the file, it interprets that G code and follows those instructions. If we look at this set of star code, it's putting in absolute coordinate mode. It's putting the extruder in relative mode. It's heating the nozzle in the bed to a low temperature that won't have oozing, but it'll still be warm enough where when it probes the bed, you'll get an accurate reading. Now, in fact, when I look at this start code, it's not even probing the bed. I can tell you that the probe command should be G29. So with there being no G29, it's not probing the bed. This command here is loading a bed mesh that's already saved. In my case, I don't particularly use this command. I always do a G29. So let's go ahead and change that. So I'm doing a G29. And then to put a comment in here, I'm just going to put semicolon and then probe the bed. And by putting comments in here, six months from now, I'll be able to remember what the heck this line does and why I set it. Now, the end code, unlike the start code, is basically what runs after the print is finished. And if you look at this, it's turning off the bed, turning off the hot end, and turning off the fans and disabling the stepper motor. Basically, what this means is once the printer's done, I'll be able to go over and just pull the bed out and grab my model off it. So this is all, again, pretty simple. It's just you need to be aware of this. Now, just for a test, let me put a comment in here. I'm going to put a comment at the top. And I'm just going to put my name. So just put Mike Wilson, minimal 3DP. And I'm going to save this as a sample profile. And let me go ahead and hit slice plate. Oops, let me close this. Slice the plate. And I'm going to export the, the G code and save it here on my computer. And I'll just save it somewhere where I can find it. And then let's take a look at that G code. I've opened the G code in Visual Studio Code. You notice there's some blocks in here that are binary that have to do with images. But if I keep scrolling down here, here is the start of my G code. And if you look right here, here's where my G code that I put in my slicer starts. And you can see basically based on that comment I put in there. So literally, the G code has been inserted into the start G code has been inserted into the G code file once it slices. And then you have all the various code to build the model. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, we'll start seeing that there's code somewhere here. There we go. Here's our code to turn off the hotbed, turn off the extruder, turn off the fans and disable those motors, which we looked at earlier. So once you put the start and end code into Orca Slicer, every time you slice a file, it's going to be embedded into that file. Now, the reason why I'm going over this, again, one of the viewers asked, what happens if I put the code on a USB drive? They thought if you just sent the code via Orca Slicer directly to the printer, it doesn't save the G code. No, it, it does. 
So if I move this file anywhere, it's going to basically insert that. It'll be part of the file and it'll be on my USB drive if I have to walk it over to the printer and start printing that way. How do I find start code? I just do simple Google searches and look for some code. So let's take a look now at some searches I found that were helpful. I've used this gist in the past, and what a gist is is basically samples of code. And if you look here, it's basically sample code that's made for Cura for start and end that's for the Ender 3 S1 Pro, but this should work for any printer. It's actually pulling the bed size from the actual printer, from the printer config, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, if I look through here, there's start and then there's the end code. And you can just copy and paste that. Now, really, you only need to copy and paste the lines that are uncommented. I would copy and paste everything so you have it. So this is some code that I've started with in the past. Now, with this sample start and end code, this should give you a pretty good start for some code you could use for Clipper. Now, in my case, I use Clipper macros to run a lot of my start and end code. With that being said, Clipper macros is a little bit more in-depth topic that I'll do a separate video on that and hopefully that'll help some people out on where to get started with that and some good references and resources that are out there for building your first Clipper macros. So if you have any questions or comments about just using start and end code, particularly in Orca Slicer, let me know and leave a comment below. If you like what I'm doing, please feel free to subscribe, share, and like. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15-minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally, what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.